straight to the point right how many credit cards do you own 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 in my hand and there may be a couple of uh, more cards with my mother if i have to sort of ask you for a number right now based on the cards you have what sort of return uh, are you getting out of these credit cards in a year when you're investing in debt or in equity you ask ki kitna return milega mujhe right Correct. similar thing in credit cards you will know how much you will get the only issue is that how much you can spend and spending completely depends on what life stage you are in right. uh, and you know how much you earn you can start with a 2% reward rate on your credit cards and go as high as 15 20% also but on an average i try to get somewhere between 7 to 8% uh, returns on my expenses lovely and if if i have to ask you what are the benefits i mean these are the approximate returns you're getting but what are the benefits you're sort of getting out of these cards what are the rewards which the cards are giving you so credit card uh, rewards we can categorize into three different types of buckets right uh, bucket number 1 uh, would be rewards in the form of cashbacks hmm. right cashbacks uh, basically mean that say if you are spending 100 rupees you could get a 2% cashback as a statement credit right. second form of reward could be uh, using your points to get a voucher or a gift hmm. a voucher could be an amazon voucher or a flipkart voucher or any other shopping voucher right. as well right and third form of third category of reward uh, is the travel focus rewards basically using your points to travel you know it could be domestic travel it could be international travel it could Could be hotels also, and where do you get the maximum amount of rewards? It's in this third category. In the first two category, it's very limited. So in right. the first category, for example, in the cashback category, uh, there are cards that gives you five percent cashback on specific spends, right? Mm. But that's the upper limit, I would say. But in the third category, there is no upper limit. In you know, in certain years, people have made uh, all as much as thirty percent also on on their card spends. Wow! In our family, our average uh, spending is in the range. of 30 to 40 lakh rupees in a year hmm. and uh, i try to spend most of it on credit cards so 90 right. to 95% of our expenses are charged on credit cards right and if you take a average return rate of say 7% also on 40 uh, lakh rupees you get 2.8 lakh rupees back which you don't get that back as a cash back or you hmm. know in the form of money hmm. that is something that you can use towards your travel right? right so you can basically do a holiday worth 2.8 lakh rupees and in in 2.8 lakh rupees you can do a decent luxurious holiday right uh, for a holiday where in the say a hotel where Where the room night costs forty thousand rupees per night, hmm. I may not give pay that money in cash. You know, no matter how rich I get, right? But when you are getting that through reward points, it's very easy to do that, right? And in early in life, you know, I may get to a stage ten years later where I can shell out forty thousand rupees per right. night in cash. But when you can do it today, why wait for ten years? Absolutely, people would want to know what would be the best credit card they can take or they should take, right? so we spoken about how your spending activity sort of regulates which credit card you should probably take so in terms of different spending ranges uh, what would be the best cards you suggest in say the multiple spending ranges there from low to high so let's you know break this into three different categories okay uh, the we can take the first uh, category of spends wherein someone is spending 5 lakh rupees in a year hmm. so here the assumption is that you know you are spending on your basic needs right and uh, you are not spending on anything luxury so i would suggest you know someone to look at a cashback card in this hmm. range maybe they can look for a card which is free so for example the amazon pay icici card hmm. one of the oldest cards that i have uh, in my wallet also right. this is a very simple to use cashback card most of us spend money on uh, uh, amazon these days right, right. say if you are a prime member and you are spending money on amazon you get 5% on your shopping back as a amazon pay balance Correct. for a up to 5 lakh person a cashback card probably makes more sense to start off with absolutely because number one you are most likely a beginner in the credit card space as well right when it comes to credit cards there are a lot of you know uh, associated habits also that you need to take care of right, right. credit card debt is the most expensive form of debt True. now you think about it uh, why do these credit card companies give you so much reward because mm. when people borrow on credit card they are easily making 30 to 40% you know uh, interest on those uh, right. outstanding balances so that's where they earn their money and you know they reward the people who are uh, very uh, disciplined with credit cards right but if you still want a travel focused card under 5 lakh rupees spends then american express platinum travel card is your card but the issue is that uh, 
ex limited acceptability. Right. So you have to deal with that challenge. Another thing to see is that you know you you may not be eligible early in your career to uh, get the best of cards, right? Because right. say for example, the HDFC Infinia card that I have, I had to wait like a, almost five to seven years to get this card. The requirement for this card today, you know, mm. it keeps changing. But mm. today it's 42 lakh rupees annual income. Wow. And now let's go to the next step of the ladder. Say someone starting at a 15 lakh, 20 lakh uh, income. Uh, what cards would you suggest there which would work well? And what kind of reward benefits should that person be looking at? So this guy who is earning 15 to 20 lakh rupees in a year is also in a position to, you know, do at least one good holiday in a year or right. once in two years, right? So they should, I would suggest focus on uh, travel focused cards, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, you are young and you want to travel. I think I have not seen anyone who doesn't like to travel, especially right. people in their 20s and 30s, right? right? Uh, so with that in mind, uh, they can look at a couple of cards which I hold. One of them is the American Express uh, Platinum Travel Card. Okay, uh, this is a silver color card and uh, the other one is the Axis Atlas card which I have. The American Express Platinum Travel card, uh, eligibility, it's not difficult. You mm. you know, uh, the income eligibility is 5 lakh rupees only mm. per annum, I think. Right. Uh, so, and you can get it as a referral. So, when you ask someone to refer you for this card, mm. it's free for the first year and you also get 2000 bonus points. Lovely. That's number one. Number two is if you spend 4 lakh rupees in a car, uh, on this card in a year, mm. you get 40,000 bonus points and then you get uh, some points on your spends also, which is around seven to 8,000 uh, points on spending 4 lakh rupees. That's uh, number two. And then you get 10,000 rupees worth of Taj vouchers as well. Oh, lovely. So what, do you, what can you do with these 50,000 points? So I'll take an example of a recent holiday that we did in February this year, which is at uh, Westin Rishikesh. Right. It is a new property opened uh, in late last year, somewhere in November mm. and December. And uh, uh, they had this introductory offer wherein you can, you know, uh, get a room night for 20, 21,000 points per night. Right. And you went for a two-night holiday to Westin Rishikesh. Mm. 30, uh, the room night is 35,000 rupees per night. So the benefit that you got is worth 70,000 rupees for, uh, you know, against 40 or 42,000 points. Correct. Right. That this 70,000 rupees worth of benefit and another 10,000 rupees worth of Taj voucher, which you can use for a stay at any Taj property. Mm. So you got a return of, you know, a value of 80,000 rupees right. on spending 4 lakhs. So the net return here is 20%. You really need to be have to be mindful about you know which property you are you are using it. So most times it happens that you know we plan our holidays based on the best deal we are getting in, right. right? I think Neeraj here two questions which sort of come to mind. One is that for say someone who wants to travel once a year, for example, or maybe twice a year, something like that. What is the best way in terms of how that person can plan to utilize credit card points for that travel? What what sort of methodology do you use and how do you plan your travel? And the second one, you talked about moving points to Marriott or you know, getting Taj vouchers. So where do you sort of get to know about these deals and how do you look these offers up? Sure. We try to do the most luxurious uh, uh, redemptions possible, right? Mm. Because I will not be, you know, paying in cash for that. Mm. So I'll give you an example of a holiday we did last year in 2022 in Dubai. Right. So we were in Dubai uh, and uh, there is a property called Almaha. Yeah. So this property costs uh, somewhere between fifteen hundred dollars to two to two thousand five hundred dollars wow. per night, and it's an all-inclusive property wherein you know you don't really have to pay for anything. Your all your meals are covered and your stay is covered, so everything is covered in that, including some activities. Mm. Uh, so we we stayed there for two nights and we paid two lakh points. The only money that I paid at that property was three thousand rupees for you know a couple of drinks. That's <laughs> it. So. Our, uh, the idea with our holidays and our redemptions is to, you know, do things which you will not be able to afford in cash. Mm. You utilize it in a way where, you know, a lot of people can enjoy that holiday. Right. Uh, again, you really need to understand uh, how, what kind of holidays we want to do, right? If I have a friend who does not really like to do these luxurious holidays. Mm. So for that person, he can, you know, use the same amount of points that I'm using for a luxurious holiday for a lot more number of nights in a cheaper hotel. Correct. Right? Because you can get a hotel night for 10,000 points per night also against right. 1 lakh points per night. 
right so he can do 10 nights in 10 different properties so if someone is spending 10 to 15 lakh rupees in a year i think you can easily do one holiday at least either mm. hotels or mm. flights mm. if you are doing economy flights maybe a combination of both hotels and flights as well right right so that completely depends on what you want and how you want to redeem and in terms of where do you sort of look for these deals uh, when you are uh, planning these holidays right of course we understand the deals keep changing from time to time different hotels might have different point transfer ratios etc so at the current status what where do you sort of look for these deals so for me uh, social media is my uh, source there are a lot of websites these days uh, where they keep talking about you know what's new in the credit card space how are people redeeming there are a lot of uh, public forums hmm. maybe i can share a list with you and you can sure. put it in the uh, description great. so nirish let's let me ask you this if i had to ask you to choose your top 3 cards in the series of cards that you have what would you sort of uh, say would those three be the number one would be the hdfc infinia card uh, this card is a good card but again the eligibility is mm-hmm. a challenge with this card but this card gives you a base reward rate of 3.3% so for every 100 rupees you spend on this card you get uh, 3.3 uh, rupees back as points so if you buy up to 20000 uh, rupees worth of amazon pay vouchers you get 5x uh, reward rate so wow. 5x basically means that uh, 16.5% which is around 3300 rupees back as points every point is valued at 1 rupee you can't really buy amazon pay voucher on the amazon website there is a specific website called gbyftr and you know you have to go there and buy so when it comes to maximizing credit card rewards you have to put some efforts right so you go there buy the amazon voucher so whatever points i earn i largely used to redeem it for my indigo flights mm. and i have to fly at least once a month so that it helps me a lot there uh, i don't spend much on this card but whenever i spend i get 16.5% back from this card right The second card uh, that I want to talk about is the Club Vistara Infinite card which hmm. is the which is from Axis Bank it's a co-branded card uh, so this card gives me a free business class ticket for a annual fee of 10000 rupees i don't use this card for spending money my primarily primary use is the gold status that comes on this card right so i take a lot of flights uh, to delhi as well mm. so this card gives me uh, not only uh, priority check in it gives me priority baggage it gives me priority boarding and uh, the excess baggage allowance as well so this helps me a lot in you know uh, traveling faster Right. right and along the business class ticket is uh, worth more than 10000 rupees in any any ways right Correct. and if somebody does not want the business class experience or the uh, you know the gold status they can look at the lower end cards which gives you a uh, premium economy hmm. ticket or the economy ticket right. even sbi has a co branded card with uh, uh, vistara idfc has co branded cards hmm. with vistara the third card that i would keep in my portfolio is the axis atlas credit card so this is a card which is very simple to use and if someone has annual spends of say 15 lakh rupees mm. i would highly recommend using this just one card so right. let us understand what is the reward structure on this card so this card comes with a fee of 5000 rupees per annum mm. and on sign up you get 5000 miles on this card and on spending say the first 3 lakh rupees you get 2500 bonus miles right. on spending 7.5 lakh rupees you get another 5000 bonus points and then on spending 15 lakhs you get another 10000 bonus miles the base reward rate on this card is uh, two points per 100 rupees mm. that you spend and if you are using this card for spending on travel say you are booking tickets mm. or you know booking a hotel you get 5 points for every 100 rupees spent oh so lovely. let us take the base case wherein you are spending 15 lakhs you earn 30000 points Right, two percent is thirty thousand. Right. So thirty thousand plus twenty two thousand five hundred, you got fifty two thousand five hundred points. These can be transferred to a lot of hotel partners and mm. airline partners. Mm. Uh, I generally use my access points to transfer it to hotel partner called Accor. Okay. So in Accor, what happens is. Uh, when you transfer to accor you get 1 is to 2 points so 52000 points i will get 1 lakh 4000 uh, accor points hmm. right and when i am redeeming hotels on accor uh, one point is worth 1.8 rupees so i got a value of around 1.8 lakh rupees on spending 15 lakh rupees hmm. so that's a little bit more than 10% right, right. Oh, once you spend the 15 lakh rupees what you get is you also get to airport airport pickups on this card so okay. basically a luxurious car will come to your house and take you to the airport 
so we, so wherever we don't have to maximize our rewards in the form of multiplier uh, we just use this card to spend right so largely any otc spends where we are you know traveling anywhere right. or shopping or anything mm. mostly it will be through this card the other cards i would keep is the mx trifecta uh, one of them is the mx uh, gold uh, charge card uh, the second one is the mx uh, membership rewards card right and uh, the third one is the mx platinum travel card so these are the five six cards that i would keep in my portfolio if you were to ask me which i, w I would discard all of the rest so i need one question right which is the most expensive card that you own and would you recommend it to somebody else so i've not spoken about this card yet uh, but this is again from american express table it's the platinum charge card so i'll tell you what benefits you get on this card uh, when you sign up on this card uh, for in the first year generally they give you 45000 rupees worth of uh, taj vouchers the annual fee on this card is 60000 rupees plus gst so wow. net cost is 70000 rupees approximately right. Uh, so you get 70, 45,000 rupees worth of Taj vouchers. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of tangible, intangible benefits also that you get on this card. You get a uh, gold membership, gold status on Marriott. You get uh, gold status on Hilton. Uh, you get a uh, Taj uh, Epicure membership, mm -hmm. which gives you like 20, 25% discount on dining right. and so on. You They also give you a 10,000 rupees worth of Taj voucher every year on your birthday. So you have to be in the high spending category to use this card. Uh, the most intangible benefit wherein you know people use this card is the concierge. Hmm. So concierge is basically a, you know a helpline wherein you can call them and ask anything you want, right? And I have a couple of friends who use concierge almost on a weekly or a monthly basis. I have barely used the concierge. So Neeraj, in terms of the concierge service which you mentioned. You said that most of mostly your friends use it more often. What sort of things do they sort of uh, ask from the concert service, which is which is provided? So it's, let's just take an example. You know, from one of my friends wanted to do a uh, you know stay on thirty first December night. Uh, right in front of the Burj Khalifa. And it's very difficult to get a room night there, right? But if you approach uh, American Express Concierge, they can probably get you uh, this deal. If you're in a problem, right? Say you're stuck in the middle of the road and something has happened to your card and you want them to help. So they will send help to you immediately, right? So there are, uh, you can use it for, you know, such kind of experiences. Basically, you call them and they'll get things done for you. So your personal manager of sorts, who has to do it for you. Uh, the experience obviously will vary from person to person, but that's the whole deal, right? You call MX concierge and they will try to get it done for you. Right. Neeraj, I think very recently we've had these UPI cards which have come up, right? Do you own one of such cards? Yes, and I do. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So I got the uh, Tata new Rupee credit card. So it's a very good card. It gives you, uh, you know, five uh, points on uh, money spent at all the Tata Group properties and a normal reward rate uh, as... If I'm not wrong, it's two points per hundred rupees spent. Right. So uh, whatever UPI spends I have, I've moved on this card now. And uh, uh, easily it's uh, between five to 15,000 rupees in a month. How do you sort of manage to keep track of the spends and on what you will spend, how much? Uh, is there some calculation which you do or how, how do you sort of approach that? Yeah, so I the math keeps running in my head. I don't maintain any sort of Excel sheets, but my wife keeps asking me whenever she has to spend money, which card should I use, right? Because she knows that if she uses some other card, uh, I will ask her, why did you use that card? So uh, that math keeps running in my head. And I think one question which comes up in everybody's mind is, or when someone thinks about having too many credit cards, is about your credit score. Are you using your credit cards too much? Does it impact your credit score negatively? What is your view and approach on that? Credit score does get impacted when you're closing a card because, you know, your overall credit limit is coming down, right? Right. Uh, so that is the, but that's a temporary impact and it again improves. Ideally, to keep your credit score, you know, the, uh, you should not spend more than 30 to 40% of the available limit on a card. If one of it's happening, it's okay, but don't do it on a regular mm. basis. Don't miss out on your credit card, you know, payments uh, right. due date.